Greetings everyone, my name is Linda Murray and I'm a water media artist living in Maine. And I'm gonna do a dirty acrylic pour this morning. And I wanted to just share the process with you, <clears throat> whether you're a beginner or a more advanced artist, um, this is a fun thing to do. And for me, the challenge is what to do with the image after it dries. So I'm gonna share that with you on my website, which is artbytheriver.com. So I start out with a golden acrylic paints. The only one that isn't golden is this one here, which is Liquitex. I try to use the best quality paints that are available. And um, I mix the paints, they're fluid acrylics, and I mix them with this product which you can find in a hardware store. It's called the Flow Trawl. And what it does is it allows the pigment to flow. So I mix that two to one with my pigment, <clears throat> and then I stir it up really well. And often I add about five squirts of water also to thin the um, product out a little bit so that it will pour and mix nicely. I have white, um, Prussian blue, phthalo turquoise, cobalt and yellow ochre. This is a very messy process. And so I put down a newspaper and you'll see why later. And I don't use gloves because I find they kind of get in the way. I haven't found any that really um, stick to my skin well enough. So, and th so I clean up with this product called Scrubby. It's got a little scrubber attached to a, a piece of soap and it works like a charm, so I highly recommend it. I got it online, and I also infuse one of my colors only with this product, which is a silicone lubricant that you can find in the hardware store in the automotive section. And I just give a couple squirts to my white, because I always use white, and <clears throat> it um, creates these wonderful little cells that have made this technique so popular. So I only mix it with one color because I've read that the silicone can make the uh, final product somewhat fugitive. So I don't want too much oil mixed with my water media because then it um, kind of compromises the longevity of the piece. So I only use it with one color and I use this uh, product which is kind of like a frothy texture rather than a heavy oil. And so here we go, we're gonna mix the colors together. I'm gonna to put some white in first, and then some Prussian blue. There's different ways you can put it in too. You can drizzle it down the side if you don't want the colors to mix too much. I just cast my fate to the wind and allow it to mix as much as it wants to. Um, some pigments are heavier than others, so they sink to the bottom. I'll put a little bit more white in there. One of the challenges when doing this technique is getting the paint to cover the entire surface. So I'm even gonna take a stirring stick and mix some of that yellow down in. Great, I didn't use enough yellow. All right, so if you're if your support, this is an ampersand clay board, uh, six by 12 inches, and if it's um, small enough, you can do a flip cup pour, which is where you take the support and you put it on top of the cup, and then you very carefully flip it over. And you can even, I've got mine sitting on um, upside down uh, containers to get it up off the paper so when it dries, it doesn't stick to the paper. And as you can see, I'm already starting to get some little cells coming out. So this is the most exciting part for me. So one, two, three, let's see what we've got. Whoa, I love it. All right, so now we very carefully move the pigment so that it starts to cover the entire surface. I usually go for the most distant corner first but sometimes the imagery will dictate that I do something different. And again, it's very messy, so you just gotta resign yourself that you're gonna get paint all over your hands. Yes, you do waste a lot of 
the pigment. I've tried to figure out ways to utilize the pigment after um, the piece is dry. And I haven't been able to do that as yet. So I'm looking at the piece and I'm trying to think how, any way I want to change it. And I think it's, it's pretty good the way it is. I always have paper towels handy because you get paint all over you and it's uh, kind of a mess. <laughs> but this is the end result. Now you can take a blow dryer on high and move the pigment around. And I think maybe I should do that just to show you what that looks like. Hold on. too much of it. It's a small piece and I don't want to move the pigment around too much because <clears throat> I kind of like the way it's going now. But you can get some movement that way. And I have some underwater pieces that the um, coral look I got by doing the blow dryer technique. So now you must let it dry. So that is the next step. On my website, I will chronicle the stages of development so you can see what I, I do with it. And again, my, art, my uh, website is artbytheriver.com. So I hope you check it out and have some fun with this technique. It's great fun whether you're a beginner or you're an experienced artist. Bye-bye for now.